Welcome back everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, I am making a video for you. This is part of a, well there were two videos I wanted to make under purchasing. The first one was about this Singer 201-2. Uh, most of these were sold in the US. Not nearly as many were sold in Canada. But I really uh, had not seen one of these in a while and decided to take it on. And so the same week, this past week, I uh, went and looked and uh, got this machine. I actually got it from someone who, who saw the channel and was local to us and asked us uh, or asked me if I would be interested and they were willing to hold it until the weather got a little better and I could go uh, out and get it picked up. So that was very nice of them to do that. Uh, they wanted me to take the machine and, and give it the full overhaul. And um, So anyway, I bought it from them and I'll find a client for it eventually. But I wish that there had been two Singer 201s to talk to you about because I looked at two this week. This machine, in spite of the fact that it has some, some wiring repair I'm going to have to investigate, make sure that that's uh, done or redone properly. I haven't it opened it up yet to really assess it yet. So I have this one. This one was unique because it's, again, it's a potted motor 201, not common in Canada. But there was another 201 I went and looked at, and I had to say no. I think it might be the first 201 I've ever walked away from and did not purchase. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit about why, and why you might have said, you know what, I'm going to buy it anyway, and I'm going to restore it. So the machine was advertised as, I believe it was advertised as good condition. So I go over, and I go over to, to take a look at it. And I'm able to look at it outdoors, you know, to keep social distancing, keep safe. And I'm looking at this machine. It is a Singer 201K, not a, not a potted motor design, which again is much more common uh, in, in Canada. And those are great. They, they, you know, in terms of the stitch forming and the mechanics, these, this, these, uh, these two types of 201s are the same. They make the same beautiful stitch. What's different is in their motive power, how they get power from the motor. Well, I go to see the machine, <clears throat> and not only is it a 201K, it's a 201K Centennial, so the badge is different, right? It's a Centennial badge. Now, mechanically, they're the same. Centennial machines don't run any better or differently, but um, when you are restoring something and you want to find someone to buy it, a Centennial badge will typically bring another $50 or so. And they're fun. And people, there are people who say, do you have a Centennial machine? You know, people want them. And so, so I look for them when I can. I go and see that machine, guys. And the first thing is that the table that it is in is heavily damaged and will not be usable. But that's okay because a 201 can be put in a different table or in a carry case for that matter. So that wasn't a problem. And I kind of, they advertised, they said it was damaged. So <clears throat> no harm, no foul there. I get there and I start looking at the, uh, the 201K. Now, unlike this machine, which has the light fixture on the front, the 201K that I went and saw had a fixture that is mounted on the back like many singers. Many of you have seen those little light fixtures and they're removable, okay? So I'm looking at it and I notice that it has wiring with exposed wires. Not only has the outside covering of the cord crumbled, but the inside insulation for each wire has, and we've got two metal wires running in parallel and the owner actually plugs it in and turns it on. And I said, are you sure about that? And they did. Now, the machine ran. It ran slowly. This was their machine. It was not mine. The machine is moving slowly. And <laughs> the, <laughs> the seller says it's in perfect condition. It just needs to be cleaned. Of course, I know. I know better. Right. I know this. But it's a 201, so I, you know, it's like looking at something that I think I, if I can get it for the right cost. And I'm looking and I'm looking. So all of us, all right away, I know that the light fixture has to be removed. Okay. And I can rewire it. There's a lot of time. Now I can also try to find a vintage replacement. 
uh, if it has good wiring and do that. So I have to uninstall the, the light fixture, reinstall the new one, or I have to take the old one off, uninstall it, and I have to literally rewire the light fixture. It can be done. It takes, it takes hours to do, guys. It's not something that you just, you know, 10 minutes, you're done. Okay, well, I see that. And then the machine, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's fairly rough. Now, the, the Centennial badge it had was in great shape. But on the top of the machine, literally from about here all the way over, a lot of the beautiful black lacquer is gone. And when I say gone, it's not flaked off. It's not like somebody scratched it off. It's literally, it looks like it was eroded away. Now, I don't know what would cause that. I don't know if someone had wrapped, you know, normally if someone put a wrap around the arm of the machine and was sticking pins in it, it would have pin rash, you know, it has, and it had none of that. It looked to me as if someone had taken like a heavy solvent and cleaned it or again you could start to see the steel now was that repairable of course i could strip the whole machine i could try to you know repaint it or have it repainted and put a new decals but why did i say no it's a 201 and a centennial 201 why would anyone say no to that when the owner turned it on i heard i heard a sound that was a clinking sound Normally, the only clinking you ever hear out of a Singer 201 or most any vintage machine is when, a, is when a spool will rattle up against the spool pin. Well, there was no spool on there. There was sound coming from the drivetrain I'm not used to hearing. Does that mean it was ruined? No. Does it mean it could have been something simple? Possibly. But here again, when you're looking at something, you don't have hours and hours to play with it and inspect it. And, you know, with COVID, even with outdoors, wearing masks, everything is done very quickly. You have to be really safe here. And I'm looking at this machine and I'm thinking, okay, I've done enough 201s to know that even a 201K, never mind the, the potted motor version that you see here, just the 201K takes me longer than almost any other machine to overhaul. The only exception to that is a 201-2 like this one. This machine with its potted motor is going to take me probably as long as longer than any other machine that I overhaul. That's just the nature of them, and I think they're worth it. And clients will pay for this because they love these machines, but it just takes, it takes what it takes. Am I faster at it than someone who's brand new? Yes. Fast, certainly faster than the first time I, I worked on a 201. But there are certain things you cannot rush. You need to do properly. There's just, they just need to be done. They need to be taken apart. They need to be cleaned, inspected, polished, right? The tension assembly, which is true on all the machines, needs to be disassembled. It needs to be cleaned, inspected, make sure, you know, there's no thread remnants, etc. But I looked at that 201 Centennial, and what I saw was even more time. In fact, it was going to take me <clears throat> longer than this potted motor singer to overhaul. Now, here's the reason why I said no, but you might say yes to something like that. When I get these machines, my goal is to get them running again. It's a hobby. And then I take uh, anything, any monies from the sale of that, and I simply buy more machines. It's like a self-perpetuating thing. There's no profit center. It's certainly not a business. Um, if, if, you know, if, if you were going to do this work on a hobby level like I do, you, you know, you starve to death if that was your only source of, of funds. So I looked at it and I thought, that Centennial is going to take me so many hours, I will lose money on it. And then I'll find a client and I'll sell it. But, you know, that's, that was a hard pill for me to swallow. And it was not easy. Like I said, walking away from a 201 is just, I don't think I've ever done it before. And the fact that it was a centennial made it extra tough. I was also going to need to get, of course, a table or a, or a or a carry case. But that, you know, I found machines before I wanted bad enough. You know, I have you know I have a, a necky that I bought recently, and I'm going to have to get a tray or a carry case for it or a table. But I loved it so much, and I thought, okay, I can work with this. So that's why I didn't buy that 201 centennial. You may say, oh, you're crazy. Why did you should have gotten it and done it anyway? Well, I might have if I wanted a Centennial Singer for myself. 
If you are looking for any vintage sewing machine for that matter, or let's say you come across a Singer 201, whether it's one of these, uh, potted motor or the, the 201Ks, whether it's a Centennial or not, if you see the machine, you say, you know what, I always wanted one of these, but I don't want to pay for one brand new. They they sell for, they're one of the more expensive machines to buy restored. Again, I can vouch for that because I have to charge more for them when I sell them because I spend a lot of time with them. They are more needy when they are restored. They're not needy when you're using them and just for normal maintenance. Don't let that, don't, don't mis, uh, misunderstand that at all. But to restore a 201 takes more time. But if it's for you and you're gonna keep it and sew with it and you've always wanted one, hey, it may be totally worth it to you to, to spend the extra time and hours over and above what is normally required to get yourself a 201. And if you do, that's wonderful because someone will need to save the machine. Someone will need to go in because all 201s I think are worth saving no matter how rough, no matter how dirty, even when they're missing a lot of their black lacquer or shellac paint, they are incredible. So again, uh, I don't know if the one I passed on had been dropped. It had a sound that I'm very, I'm, like I say, guys, between nine and 10 years of doing this, I've never heard a 201, no matter how ugly and rough it looked. It never sounded like that. Uh, the table had been broken. I don't know if the machine had been, I, again, I just don't know. And uh, will I second guess that? Probably, but uh, you know, centennial or not, Maybe that's a project for someone else to take on. I don't know. I don't know what will happen to it, but again, uh, I think it's the first time you guys have ever heard me say I passed on a 201. And it wasn't because the price was ridiculous. It was because I knew that in order for me to truly bring it up uh, to, to good mechanical shape was going to take a lot more hours than any machine I've ever worked on. And aesthetically, these things matter. If, if you find someone who wants to buy a 201, a Singer Featherweight, a 301, aesthetics do matter. You can't charge, you know, hundreds of dollars for a machine that's really rough looking. Even if you've gotten it mechanically magnificent, you know, it's, you know, how many of you would want to pay 350 close to $400 for a fully restored 201 that looked like crap, you know? And when I say looked like crap, I don't mean it didn't have a few, you know, scratches or bumps, you know, beauty marks from, from age. I'm talking about major, major paint loss. So anyway, guys, uh, if you have uh, any thoughts, if you think I was uh, mistaken, for passing on a Singer 201 Centennial. Leave your comments there. If you think I, I made the right decision, let me know. I think it might still be for sale, or who knows, somebody may have gotten it. Um, maybe they donated it, I don't know. Anyway, you can't save them all, but uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's something that rarely ever happens, and it, oh man, it broke my heart to walk away. Uh, and again, I didn't walk away. It wasn't, the, it wasn't about the price so much as, um, you know, I have to be able to justify when I buy something, I'm inspecting it and I'm, I'm making an educated guess based on my experience on how long it will take me to overhaul. Because those hours, you know, the people who are, who are getting these machines from me are not, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just people who want to sew and they're, but they're, but they're only willing to pay for so much. And you cannot, there's a limit to what you can charge for anything, no matter how hard you work on it. And, uh, everyone's time is valuable including my own so i'll have to you know i like i said i've been pondering this and wondering if i made the right decision but time will tell uh but i appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned there will be a lot more videos coming up on this singer 201-2 uh so apparently singer did sell some of these direct drive versions of the 201 in canada or maybe it was brought over. U.S. and Canada have the same electrical systems, and so uh, it's very possible that um, someone simply moved to Canada, or who knows? I mean, you know, goods go back and forth across the border all the time. But if you guys have a potted motor 201, or if you have the 201K, let me know if uh, what you like about your machine. If you like it, if you 
if you wish you had the other one. I've had people on both sides say, boy, I have this one, but I wish I had the other version. So the grass is always greener, I suppose. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for more 201 videos.